showing negative DBM is important enough to have its own video. So where does this come from? If you've been in Wi-Fi, you've seen negative signal values. If you haven't, you can go in your uh, operating system, your Windows or your Mac, and you can actually hover over it. And a lot of times it'll tell you the signal strength, but the number will look something like this. Negative 60 dBm. So why the negative? This is actually going to show more reason why we love the dBm over using milliwatt. So we have our standard rule of tens and threes over here. So what we're going to concentrate on is why negative values. On the last video, we started with this. Zero dBm equals one milliwatt. And that hasn't changed. Remember, that's an absolute. If we move our way up, 10 dBm equals 10 milliwatts. We could say 13 dBm equals 20 milliwatts because we're following these rules. Plus 10, plus 3, we follow the rules and it gets us to our positive dBm to milliwatt conversions. But what about going the other direction? Negative 60 dBm. That's a pretty strong signal. That would be considered a great signal, actually. But why a negative? Does that mean you have negative signal? It doesn't. So how do we get to a negative 60? From 0 to negative 60, using our rule of 10s and 3s, means we do negative t minus 10. Six times. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. We do that six times. Of course, this is a dB. So we'll just uh, imply that. <clears throat> so what happens when you have minus 10 decibels on the left side what do you do to the right? You have to do the same thing on the other side. It is one-tenth the original power. That is decimal points now. This is actually a little easier. 0.1 milliwatt. So if you had a signal strength of negative 10 dBm, you would have 0.1 milliwatt. Maybe it's worth pointing out why we're here in the first place. Now, depending on the order you're taking these videos, you may have seen something about a link budget. And we're going to do that in a different, whole different video. But when you have, let's say you have an access point, and it is transmitting EIRP. And let's say that EIRP is 20 dBm. That's 100 milliwatts. When it transmits to a client, say it's connecting, your phone is seeing that. What signal level is your phone getting? Well, again, I said negative 60 is a strong st signal strength. So how did it go from a positive 20 to a negative 60? That means you have 80 decibels of loss between the two. So there's a minus 80 just over the air between your access point and your client device. That's actually really good. That's really normal. In fact, you'll see loss is much higher than that. So what you have is, is over the air, this loss in the air are really high values. Signal is a, effectively electricity, it's energy. And going through the air, that energy through the air dissipates very quickly. So a, a loss of 80 decibels over the air is quite normal. Again, like I said, it'll even be higher than that in many situations. So uh, that's what happens is we're seeing these losses. The reason a negative 60, what we would see on the other side here, a negative 60 dBm signal, again, great signal, that's actually quite strong, is normal to see because there are these losses across the air. So let's go back to this. The reason we're seeing these losses, if you actually had a signal strength of negative 10 dBm, so we minus 10 dB takes us to 10, negative 10 dBm. If you were to see that signal strength, you are physically right on the access point. I mean, you are like almost touching it with your device to see that kind of signal strength. So that's why realistically we're seeing much more in the realm of negative 60, negative 70, negative 80 is really pushing it. That's, a little, that's pretty weak. So as we keep losing these decibels, 
we just keep adding zeros. So here we're at point zero zero one, point zero 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 one, one, two, three, four, one, and one, two, three, four, five, one. Why do we have the DBM? There's many cool reasons. That way you don't have to convert it, DB, DBM, DBI, all interchangeable in the sense that you can add and subtract them. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, just making sure I had my numbers lined up here. So you could say if someone said, hey, what signal strength do you have? Would you rather say, oh, I have neg 60 DBM, or you could say I have 0 .00001 milliwatts. You may sound cooler saying that, but it's going to get tiring very quickly. <clears throat> uh, so that's what we're looking at. That's what, um, that's what a negative signal strength is. A negative signal strength is still a positive number. It's just a really, really weak signal. Well, at least numerically weak. Again, in real life, negative 60 dBm is strong. You're going to rock that thing. Hopefully this gives you a good idea as to why signal strengths in the negative are in the negative, but they're actually still positive. We're starting with 0 dBm equals 1 milliwatt, and effectively from here, we're just cutting that 1 milliwatt up into little tiny, tiny pieces, where we end up with somewhere down here between negative 60, negative 80 dBm as a somewhat standard signal strength. Hope that helps. This should be the end of our RF math section. Now, as questions come in, I may actually add a few videos that could help uh, explain things if I get some specific questions on it. But for now, hopefully this locks it down for RF math and converting dBm to milliwatt and back and forth.